Ready, man? Check this out. So they're building an apartment building right, ne right next to my apartment building. And like, not only is it super loud all the time, but man, these dudes are out there grinding. Like they're working on Sundays, they're working Mondays, they're working seven days a week. They get up every morning and start working at 6 a.m. And honestly, I feel like I gotta take a look in the mirror. Like these guys make me feel kind of lazy. Anyway, welcome to the video, bro. Today I wanna talk to you about how to stop being a nice guy. And I'm not saying you should walk around and be a dick to everybody, but like I used to be the type of guy who would struggle to stand up for myself. So I wanna tell you a few, a few steps I took to, to get over this and start commanding respect from everyone I deal with. You already know, bro, we're starting the day with some French ass toast. The only problem is I ran out of my thick Texas toast, so I need to make it with this thin multigrain toast, which is actually still pretty good. I don't know why I'm complaining. Number one, you need to know it's okay. So let me know if this sounds familiar, and this is a situation that I used to go through all the time. I would get a girl's number, you know, I'd approach her or I'd match with her on Tinder, and then I would set up a date with her. And then like the day of the date or the day before the date, she would send me a message like this. And you know, I'd be like, fuck man, I still wanna see this girl. So I'd send her a message and say like, hey, that's okay, maybe later this week we can try and do it again. And then guess what, bro? She would say yes, We'd set up another date, and then the same thing would happen again. And I'd just keep getting led on, even though I wasn't really okay with it. You know, I just kept letting it slide because like, I, I really wanted to meet this girl. I know last time brother man did not like the French toast, but maybe he'll like the whole grain toast. Here you go, man. Here you go. Yo, this guy, he's just like, he's not about his gains. This guy's that he's cutting all year long. Now I also have this friend who's been seeing this girl and she pushed to make the relationship exclusive but then at the same time she never actually wants to hang out with him and he's continuing to see her, I mean not that often but he's continuing to be in the relationship and I was like dude like is this okay with you? And he said no of course not but I really like her. And this type of thing can happen in the workplace a lot too. You know, maybe your boss does not value you and he's constantly promoting your coworkers, but you're getting the bitch into the stick and he's asking you to cover other people's shifts and to work late and you're not cool with it, but you don't want to rock the boat either. So you keep doing it. Or right, something that happens to me a lot is I work with a lot of different brands and sponsors, right? And a lot of times they'll bring a new deal to me and they're basically offering to pay me the same thing as a year ago, even though my views have doubled, my audience size has doubled. And it creates this awkward situation because I'm not really okay with that. And bro, that's the first step here. You need to pay attention and recognize when someone's doing something to you that's not okay. Because our natural reaction is just to ignore it, sweep it under the rug and hope that it gets better on its own. That's what I used to always do. Because once you tell yourself, yo, this is not all right, that means that you have to confront the person. And let's be honest, that can be pretty uncomfortable. I don't gotta stand to be the man out here. So we're heading to the gym right now, sipping on that good good. And y'all know, if there's one thing I'm about, it's constantly challenging myself to grow a little bit stronger. Like at the gym today, we're gonna try and deadlift five more pounds than last week. Uh, you know, every morning when I'm cooking up my French ass toast, I try and make it a little better than yesterday. I try and make all my YouTube videos a little better than the last one. That's why I got Patrick on the camera right now, bro. And that's also why I decided to partner with Skillshare to be the sponsor of today's video. So check it out, man. Skillshare is basically this massive online learning community that has thousands and thousands of classes in different areas from videography and photography to business and entrepreneurship. And a couple of classes on there I'd recommend would be, uh, there's one that teaches you the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro, which is you know the application I use to edit all my videos. You guys are asking about that all the time. Or another cool one I found shows you how to shoot and edit photos for Instagram. I know a lot of y'all are trying to upgrade your Instagram game. And the cool part is that 
premium membership is less than $10 per month. That gives you access to unlimited courses so you can always be challenging yourself to learn new skills and take your life to the next level. And because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, you already know they hooked us up. The first 500 guys who click that first link in the description are gonna get two full months of premium membership completely free. What are you doing, man? Go click that link. My, my lower back is quite tight, man. I did heavy squats yesterday. In general, it's definitely not a good idea to do these heavy squats, heavy deadlifts back to back. But, uh, beast mode. Today we got 490 pounds going for three reps. This will be a PR if we get it. Last week we got 485 for three. It was not easy though. I'd say probably like 50-50 probably like chance of success. I like, I like my odds. We'll round up. Gains, bro. Workout complete. A big thank you to the the homie Patrick with the crazy camera skills. If you don't, if you don't know who this man is, you need to go back and watch the previous video because, like, not only do we tell his story and why he's part of the channel now but he also had some crazy ass edits. And this time guys, we made sure the lens was clean, no street dirt. No, no <laughs> spots on the camera today. <laughs> Number two, you have to take action now. All right, so once you realize that someone's doing something that's not okay with you, the next step is to have the conversation, right? But I can tell you from my experience that my, my natural inclination is to delay having this conversation or confrontation as long as possible because it's kind of intimidating, I don't feel like doing it, and I just want to think about it more, right? But when you do this, what happens? You just start to second guess yourself. You start to think about, I don't know what's the best way about doing this. Let me ask somebody else for advice. And also it starts to build up inside of my head and feel like it's a bigger and bigger deal, which is just gonna make me more and more nervous when I actually have the conversation. So what I've realized, I've made a rule for myself now. I'm going, whenever I'm in one of these situations, I make sure that I confront the person as soon as fucking possible. So if it's a girl that's flaked on you once, well maybe not flaked on you once, you know, she flaked on you for the second time and you're like, all right, it's not cool now. Pick up the phone and text her. Look, I wanna meet you, but I'm done playing games. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Boom, done. If it's a sponsor that I'm dealing with and I have to have a conversation with them, I pick up the phone, call them and say, hey look, I've been thinking about this and we need to talk now. And the beauty of doing this is that regardless of how the conversation goes, it's immediately gonna get rid of all of this anxiety, which is going to allow you to be more confident in every other area of your life. Plus, the other person's gonna take you a lot more seriously. Like, I've done this with girls before, and they've straight, right away, turned around and been like, oh shit, you know, I actually do wanna hang out with you. I'm sorry, my bad, uh, when are you free? Like, this happened with my, gir my girlfriend, my fiance now, Julia. And the same thing happens with sponsors. When I pick up the phone right away, they know that I know my value and that I'm not playing around and they're a lot more likely you know to give me the negotiation that I want now if it's possible to have the confrontation in person so maybe it's with your boss or with a girl that you're already seeing then you got to do it in person man because this shows a lot more strength and the key is to look like you're calm so even if you're super nervous inside you know force yourself to sit back you know take up some space and also talk slow because when we're anxious, we tend to want to talk really fast like this and kind of hunch over like this, but that shows a weakness. It shows that you're nervous. The other person's gonna know that. If you chill and you talk nice and slow like this, they're gonna take you a lot more seriously and you're gonna be a lot more likely you know, to get the outcome that you nah, want. Nah, nah. Have my back against the wall. Now I'm thinking about the way up. I learned that even if I'm off, I don't never gotta say much. On top of here like a man bun. Trying to get it for my grandson. They did me foul and even then. So for dinner, we're at Poke. 
I, I wanted to switch it up and do something different for y'all, but Julia's like, nah, I want poke. She's, she's not trying to be fun. Okay, poke is fun, and he was trying to take me to McDonald's. Y'all know he was taking me to McDonald's. First of all, Julian doesn't say y'all. <laughs> Second of all, I was not trying to take her to McDonald's. Yeah. But he's a cheap date. Do you wanna you wanna go to McDonald's after this? No. Trying out this ooh, trying out this hazy IPA from Light Circus, aka Gainer Shake. Swallowed. <laughs> Swallowed. It's swole and it's solid. Eight out of ten. And I'm drinking Pinot Grigio. Didn't know it came in a can, but I'm excited. It tastes like it came in a can. I taste like I came in a can. <laughs> All right, number three, you have to be prepared to walk away. All right, so check it out. When you confront someone about something they're doing, either A, they're going to agree with you and they're going to change, or B, they're not going to change. So let's say you send that message we're talking about to a girl. Uh, you know, I'm done playing games. Let me know if you want to hang out. Either A, she's going to get back to you and say, you know what, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm down to hang out. Or B, she might send you a message like this. And this is a very real possibility. It's definitely happened to me before. And basically what she's saying is, you know, I don't believe that you're willing to walk away. I'm going to keep stringing you along. And you only have one option in this point, bro. You have to grab your nuts and put the phone down. Do not text her again. Because if you text her again and you try and set up another date or something, She's gonna know that you're not for real, you're not willing to walk away, and she's gonna have zero respect for you. You're just gonna turn into her pen pal that she texts when she wants validation. You know, if I if I call up a sponsor and I'm like, look, you know, I wanna work with you guys, but my new rate is X dollars, and you guys are only offering me, you know, this much, either A, they're gonna be like, all right, uh, we hear you, you know, we're willing to increase our offer by this much, or B, they might be like, well, you know, this is what we're offering you, what do you wanna do? And in that case, the only thing I can do is say, you know, unfortunately, if you can't meet my new rate, uh, I can't work with y'all and I might lose their business. But at the end of the day, they might come back a month later and say, you know what? We want to work with you. And if I was to just accept their offer and be like, oh, all right, I guess I'll do that. They're never going to increase my rate. Like I'm going to be stuck at that rate forever. I'm be giving up a lot of money. Now, the one situation where this is kind of sticky is if you're confronting your boss about something that you no longer want to do. Hey man, you know, I, I can no longer work late. I can no longer cover everyone's shifts. You got to find someone else for that. Because if you're doing this, there's a good chance your boss is going to be like, well, uh, you know, I'm sorry, man, we need you to do that. And if you're not willing to walk away, you're going to be the office bitch. Like there's no way around it. He's going to be like, well, this guy, this guy's coming to me, but he's not really willing to walk away. So I'm going to keep having him do this. And I know that if you know, you're really financially tight, you don't have a choice. Uh, you're gonna have to continue working there. So I would say, you know, if you're really not happy with the job, you should immediately start looking for other possibilities. So you can tell your boss, well, you know, I'm talking to this company and this company, and if you're not willing to treat me with how I deserve you, I am willing to walk away. What is this place? I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but you got yourself killed at RST. We'd rebuild the most important assets in the US military. So we just saw a new Vin Diesel movie. It was called Bloodshot, and he's like an action movie. He's dead. They bring him back with some like technology blood that just like he can regenerate body parts. What do you think? Uh, like six out of ten. It was entertaining, but I feel like it's every Vin Diesel movie. Yeah, but I like those. So I'd say like if I'm being if I'm being strict critic, I'd say probably like a six and a half out of ten. But I enjoyed it like an eight and a half out of ten. Anyway, one last thing I wanted to note is that if you're having one of these difficult conversations and things aren't going your way, so maybe you know the girl gives you some BS response or a brand I'm talking to, uh, they're not willing to meet my rate. It's not always a loss because like not only is it building a good habit and it's building mental strength, but a lot of times the girl a few days later might be like, oh, like he was for real. And then she might get back to you. That has happened to me. Or one of these brands uh, might get back to me with a counter offer, you know, that's now something acceptable that I can accept. I hope that all of that made sense. If you're still watching this video, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you, bro. If you're new to the channel, come on, man, what are you doing? Click subscribe and turn notifications on because I drop two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly. Yeah.